Hello, everyone. Thanks for, for being here. And uh, thanks to Clarin for, for having us. Uh, so what I'll be presenting is the results of the upskills needs analysis, which was coordinated by the University of, uh, of Bologna. And it was a rather complex analysis where we included a range of approaches. So uh, we did a survey of existing uh, curricula in languages and, uh, and linguistics, and we, we created a corpus of job advertisements that could be relevant for language and linguistics students. Uh, but we also spoke a lot in writing and uh, through, through uh, oral interviews with representatives of, of companies who hire uh, language specialists, so to say. So uh, we also we have detailed reports on all of these steps, uh, but what I'll be actually presenting is uh, a digest version, we could say, of, of, of our results, which we formulated in this uh, format of um, a new target profile for students of languages and linguistics. And we call this profile language data and project specialist. So I'll tell you a bit about the knowledge, skills, and competences that we uh, that we identified. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you something about the knowledge, skills, and competences, and about the typical tasks that are related to this uh, to this profile that uh, that we identified and uh, and defined. And uh, before going into into details on this, I would like to stress that. Uh, this profile should be seen as a very, very general target profile for, again, students of languages and linguistics. So it's not that every student needs to acquire everything that you'll see on, on, the, on this list. Uh, it is intended as a general orientation tool for lecturers, uh, course planners, and, and so on. Uh, it's intended to give an idea of what is required in, uh, in contemporary language, language industry. Uh, so in a sense, it's a more of a pick and choose model. So there are elements that are probably relevant for everyone, but not, every, not everyone is expected to acquire all the, uh, all the knowledge, skills, and, and, uh, and competences. Now, let me see if I can show you the list of, okay, here they are. So essentially we identified seven clusters of knowledge, skills and competences, uh, disciplinary, inter intercultural, transversal, technical, data oriented, research oriented and organizational. And uh, to be a bit more specific, uh, I've listed some examples here. So these are not complete lists, but you, you can see some examples of the kinds of, of things that, that fall under these, uh, these general areas. So the disciplinary knowledge, skills, and competences are those that are already rather well represented in all language and linguistic, uh, linguistics degrees. So knowledge of specific languages, ability to conduct linguistic analysis, translation, and so on. So it's already here clear that not every student will necessarily gain all of these competences, but every student will gain something in this, in this group. Uh, and that's already kind of present in the in the curricula then the intercultural competences the situation is quite similar cultural agility aware awareness of uh, specific context so that's already typically quite well covered transversal skills are those that are relevant not only for language and linguistic students but for many others so problem solving skill present skills presentation skills and and so on so this side so let's say the 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 what you see on the left is already kind of fairly well covered. Now what the rest we feel, and it seems, uh, it seems that industry representatives uh, see it that way too, that is slightly less covered in existing curricula. So that involves technical skills that are being more and more present because everyone is aware that in today's society, these are necessary uh, for doing well anything pretty much. So uh, contemporary students of, of uh, languages and linguistics need to know something about language technologies and resources. Ideally, they should know something about programming or at least have an understanding of, of uh, what it is about. Uh, 
then there are also the so-called data-oriented skills uh, that involve the ability to collect, manage data, analyze data, also involve knowledge of statistics and data standards. So you can clearly recognize Clarin's role in data oriented uh, in the data oriented cluster as well as in the technical technical cluster. We also identified a research oriented cluster. So uh, it's not just about collecting data. It's also about uh, knowing which questions to ask, how to assess data critically and so on. And finally, there is this cluster that was slightly surprising to us, I guess, at least to me, it was the organizational cluster. I was, I must admit, I was not aware that it was uh, so required, but a lot of, of industry positions require fairly advanced knowledge of project management, uh, workflow planning, and so on. So this seems to be uh, also uh, something that, that we should enable students to, to learn during their, uh, during, uh, during their university during their university studies. So uh, our idea is that um, students of languages and linguistics these days should leave university knowing something from each of these clusters. Uh, I will briefly show you also four sub profiles that we identified because we think that uh, some course, some degree courses might be more oriented towards one aspect, some more towards another, but it seems that a bit of everything is, is required in the, in the industry. And uh, in terms of typical tasks and responsibilities, uh, here is again an extract from from our longer longer list uh, tasks go from uh, transcription of audio files and collection of linguistic linguistic data to actual research on the collected data and also research on uh, business processes and market needs so not just so research still related to language but not directly on, on language data and then we have tasks uh, that we all know very well, such as translation and interpreting. There are also many job positions involve me, involving development and testing of new software, so new language technologies, uh, or machine learning models. So there is a possible role for, for our students there as well. And there are also positions that uh, involve uh, a lot of communication with clients, teams, and so on, uh, and project, project management. So here again, uh, we see a sort of clustering uh, towards more data-oriented tasks and responsibilities, those that are more technical, those that are research-oriented, and those that are organizational. And uh, you, might, you might notice that there are three clusters missing here. That's because they are needed for everything. Because for any of these tasks, you need disciplinary knowledge, you need intercultural knowledge, and you need uh, transversal well, knowledge, uh, knowledge skills and, and, and competencies. So that kind of, you know, it, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't go without saying, but it's kind of understood uh, in, this, in this slide that, at, at least. Uh, and finally, let me briefly show you the four sub profiles that we, uh, that we identified. So within this very general target profile, uh, we realized that there could, that we realized that it could be a bit too general for some course planners and that it might be a good idea to also offer uh, a more, slightly more focused planning tool. Uh, so um, we defined uh, these four sub profiles that we called language data analyst, language data scientist, language data manager, and language project manager. And you see here brief descriptions of typical tasks and responsibilities uh, that are more focused on data collection and annotation and initial analysis in a language data analyst, then more on research for language data scientists, uh, more on data management for a language data manager, clearly, and finally more on project in workflow coordination for language project uh, manager. So we can see that, um, oops, okay. So uh, one dimension uh, that differentiates between, uh, between uh, these sub profiles is whether they are more oriented towards research or towards 
organizational tasks. And another dimension that we possibly identified concerns probably some sort of seniority, uh, because it seemed to us that a language data analyst could be an entry position uh, for BA students, so, so from, uh, for students who graduated from their BAs, whereas for a position of a language data scientist, well, it, more advanced knowledge uh, would, be, would be required. So this would probably be something that's more appropriate for either MA students or, um, or students who only did a BA, but already have some working experience as language data analysts. And similar for language data manager and language project. Uh, manager, where the language project manager could be seen as more as a more senior senior position, and um, I would just like to briefly repeat what what I started from. So we we see these profiles as guidelines for lecturers and course planners who would like to um, update their existing courses. So we're not proposing an entirely new program. We are proposing a curriculum component uh, that will also offer uh, learning, learning materials for. We're proposing this uh, curriculum component that could help enhance what is already implemented in the courses. So that, um, that's, how we, that's how we in Upskill C uh, see our role. Uh, we are also planning to come up with an interactive application that could help in uh, in using this profile. But that's 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 work in progress in progress still. And yeah, I think that's uh, that's all I had to to say.